Thank you for tuning in to watch our video on how to perform a calibration using the Electronic Development Labs, or EDL's, Surface Transfer Standard, or STS Calibrator. The STS is an easier, less expensive, and less time-consuming alternative to using a block in a large bath for in-house verification of sensors and parameters. A little background on EDL. We are proud to be a true American manufacturer of temperature measurement and calibration instrumentation to a number of industries in the U.S. and around the world. We were established in 1943 as a repair house for instruments and soon saw how to make superior products. We quickly grew to become a widely respected manufacturer of sensors, parameters, and calibrators, all things temperature measurement related. Our name is synonymous with quality, and since our inception, the EDL name has earned a strong reputation for excellence in both manufacturing and service. We develop our products based on industry demands. Over the years, we have engineered and manufactured a number of parameters to accompany our quality sensors. Nowadays, more and more companies have a need for performing in-house calibrations, which has led us to develop the STS Calibrator, which we will demonstrate today. This is the STS Calibration Reference System, and the purpose of this unit is to minimize any measurement uncertainty by ensuring the accuracy of the test equipment. The STS Reference System includes the EDL's Pocket Pro with the extension lead, the STS Calibrator itself, and a NIST traceable calibration certificate. This STS calibrator is extremely lightweight and easy to use, so let's go over some basics. Here we have an adjustable handle, helps with the portability, you can set it however you need to, and on the back here we have the thermocouple output, which is where I will be plugging in my reference system, which is the pocket probe that the STS calibrator reference system comes with. This is our RS-232 jack. What this does is this enables your calibrator to actually speak with your computer or your laptop. All of the STS calibrators are going to come with the iTools software, which we will go over later. Um, right here, you have your modular cord jack, and this just plugs into any 110 outlet, and then you have your simple on-off switch. So I'm going to go ahead and set everything up for us. Once you have everything plugged in and turned on, you're going to make sure everything is reading in the same unit of measurement. All of the STS calibrators come from our lab, automatically set at 100 degrees Celsius. If you want it to come in degrees Fahrenheit, we can do that. I will also show you on iTools a little bit later how to change it to degrees Fahrenheit. We've got our reference point. I'm going to leave this here. The STS calibrator is designed for use with any surface sensor or parameter. In this example, we're going to use the Easy Probe and your standard surface sensor. We also have for demonstration just a 45 degree surface sensor. We have a rugged surface sensor with a coil cord. We have a long shank with the spring armor lead. And we have a mini wand. You can use any of these for this application, but for this demonstration, we're just going to use your standard surface sensor. You're going to turn your unit under test on. You're going to remove the cap. You're going to take your surface sensor. You're just going to hold it onto the block. We're only doing it at 100 degrees Celsius, but be very careful because this may get hot. You're going to hold it on here. Right now it's reading at 102. My unit under test is reading at 102, and our reference is reading at 102. So we know that this unit is ready to go. EDL suggests that you do a calibration on your STS calibrator annually. We can perform those here in our labs, and you can do them whenever you feel necessary. So now I'm going to show you how to use iTools a little bit. What iTools is, is it is Eurotherm software for the controller. You're going to download it onto your computer, and then to open it up, you're going to double click on the software. Once it comes up, we're going to hit scan. When this pops up, it's going to automatically populate to one to two. If it doesn't, don't worry. When the calibrators leave our lab, we always assign the address to either one or two position. You can scan up to 254. The reason to not do that is because it would take a while, so if you simply put in the parameters of 1 to 2, it's going to be much quicker. Once they're in there, we're going to come over here and hit OK. Once this comes up, there's a bunch of different features. I'll go over just a few of the basics. If we click right here at Device Panel, we're going to open up, and this is what is actually on the screen of the controller on the front of the calibrator. If we want to change the set point, we can do that right here. Instead of touching the calibrator itself, we can simply click right here. We'll go down to 100, um, just for demonstration. So there we go. Oh. We can also come over here and double click on input. 
when you come here, you can change it from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, go to Kelvin, whatever you need. If you notice, some of them are blued out. What that means is that during this function or in this screen, we can't actually make any changes to the ones that are blued out, such as the decimal points. That's okay. We can change it from operator mode to configuration mode. We're going to right click down here, come to set access level. Where it says operator, we're going to switch it to configuration. Once here, it's going to lock out the controller on the face of the calibrator so we won't be able to change anything. That's okay. We'll go back in just a minute. We'll hit yes. Once here, it changes to configuration, reminding you that nothing is actually working right now. And it may cool down a little. We'll come back over here to input, double click. And if you notice now, decimal points is now black. So we can change that if we would like to go to two decimal points, no decimal points, whatever we need. There's also a range feature. You can set a high range. So if you are only going to calibrate up to maybe 400 degrees, you could set your range to, let's say, 450. You don't want to set it at 401 because if it's at 401 and the calibrator happens to overshoot the 400, that may happen, it will actually shut off. So if you give yourself a little bit of leeway, set it at 450, you'll be okay. If it reaches that point, it will actually turn off. So you want to make sure to give yourself some room. We set them from the lab at 670. That is to avoid melting the block inside of the calibrator. To get out of configuration mode, we're going to follow the same steps. Right click, set access level, and change back to operator. One more feature that I will go over is that there's actually a graph that we can look to monitor what's happened on the calibrator. So we can right click right here on the OPC scope. Once this comes up, we're going to double click on COM3 double click on ID 001, and then we can double click, let's just do right here on input. We will choose the PVN value, double click here, and we're gonna come right here and we're gonna show the chart properties. Once this comes up, we're gonna have to actually select the chart so it will show up for us. We can come over here and change the axes. If you wanna change it to 15 minutes, 30 minutes, however long you wanna notice. Um, let's just set it to 10 minutes for now. Come back to items, we'll move this out of the way, and we'll simply click on chart, and then you're going to see that this is what your controller's actually been reading. Um, we can also come over here to set point, SP, and then we can look at where the set points have been. If you notice over here, back in our control panel, it says SP1. It's already highlighted, which means it's going to show up here on the actual graph. But let's click here, and I'll show you how you can change the color. So if you want to say, okay, let's make this red. Now our set point, when I first turned iTools on, it was at 102. We dropped it down to 100, and now it's held steady at 100. And now you know how to use the basic functions of iTools. And one thing to keep in mind when using iTools, if you turn off your computer, you will lose any data that you have not saved. You can turn off the calibrator. That will not affect anything. Just leave it plugged in. And if you would like to watch the next video, I will show you guys how to actually use the data logger in iTools so you will not lose that information. So please subscribe to our channel and check back for new videos. Thanks for watching.